Good morning, boys and girls. It's nine o'clock and it's time for Reading with Mrs. Glick. I am so sad that we're not getting together on Zoom to do this, but I do hope that you'll enjoy this lesson and uh, be able to do the activities afterwards when we're done. Um, before we start, I wanna remind you of what we did last week, uh, or not last week, but on Monday. Uh, I wanna thank you to everyone who did their homework. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, we first, uh, last week, we read a story about trees and we talked about cause and effect. If you remember, we found out in that story that the sun causes things to happen to our trees. Let's have a look at some of the homework that was done. Uh, I love this one here. We, we remember that uh, the sun causes our trees to look different. If you remember, when there's a lot of sun, our trees, the effect is our trees become green. When there's less sun, that's when our trees start to lose color because they're not making food anymore. And the leaves all turn orange and brown and red. And then in the winter, when there's very little sun and it's very cold and there's snow and ice and it's really freezing, all the leaves fall off the tree. But then when the spring comes and the rain starts to come down and the sun is starting to shine bright again, that's when the leaves begin to grow. And then our trees turn back to being green again. For those of you who did your job, I love it. Thank you. You did a fantastic job on your work. And if you'll look in Class Dojo, I'm giving points to the students who are being very responsible and keeping their brains sharp. That's my goal is I want to make sure that you're still learning, even though we're not in the classroom. So thank you to all my friends who did their homework over the weekend or on yesterday, on Tuesday. I'm sorry. I'm not at school. I feel like it's the weekend. Um, also, after that, we also read our story about the Leaning Tower. Uh, I looked in Raz Kids and I was very happy to see that several of you not only listened to the story, but you read it yourself. And you completed the quiz afterwards to make sure that you were remembering all of your learning. Way to go. If you did that, I want you to give yourself a pat on the back and say, I did that. And if you didn't, there's still time. You can still go in there and do it. Uh, several of you sent me pictures of the work that you did. Uh, I know I attached the worksheet to our class dojo uh, so that if mom had a way to print it out, you could use the actual worksheet. But if not, I love how my friend here just wrote it in his notebook and you can do that. He wrote his causes here and the effects that we already had. What was the effect of causing the tower to lean? Why did it lean? Because they built it on soft ground. And why did the tower lean even more? When they built it, they made it too tall and too skinny, and that caused the tower to lean sideways. Then we wanted to find out, how did they make the tower stop leaning? Well, if you remember, they caused that by putting ropes around it. Because they put ropes around the tower, it held it up and it stopped leaning. Then they put even more weight on the ropes to hold it really strong. And again, that helped the tower to stop leaning. So if you got those same answers, please check your work. If you had those answers in your book, again, nice job. Keep it up. Fantastic. Um, again, please check Dojo. Uh, I'm loving to give points out to you. I know we're not in the classroom and I can't give you points there, but I'm giving us points for those of you who are, who are being very responsible. I love it. I also saw that several of you have gone into your, your math games, uh, Khan Academy and the happy numbers. And I love that you're keeping your math skills strong. Thank you. Thank you. Continue to take pictures and send them to me. I love to see what you're doing at home. Uh, today, we're going to be reading a new story. We're going to continue learning more about cause and effect by looking at a new story today that I have to share with you. Today, I want to share with you a story. It's called The Drum. And this is a really cool story. In this story, a young boy from India, he learns a lesson in kindness. Now, I know we know what kindness is. Kindness is when you are nice to somebody. And when you are nice to somebody, it makes them happy. And a lot of times it's going to make you happy too. This is an Indian folk tale and it's retold by Catherine Follett. And the illustrations, if you remember illustrations are the pictures, the illustrations were done by Teresa Martinez. And in this story, the boy is going to learn a very important lesson about kindness. So I want you to listen for that while we're reading this story to see what he learns about being kind to others. 
There are some words in this book that I want to make sure you understand. Now, most of these words we already know. We know what hungry means. We know what musicians are. They play music. And that in turn makes people happy. They're showing kindness by giving music. But then we also have some robbers in the story. They're not very nice people and they don't do kind things. We know about struggling. Struggling is when you try very hard to do something and it's difficult and sometimes it doesn't always work, but you don't give up and you keep going. Now these two words up here, I'm not sure if you're gonna understand what these words are. Goods are things that you can buy, things that you want and things that you need. I need to make this smaller so that you can see me down here. Goods are things that you want and need. Usually, you can find goods at a grocery store. When I want some Skittles, I go to the grocery store because I want these. I don't need them, but I want them. So I go to the store and I can buy them there. But in some places, there are people who sell goods out on the streets, just like these folks here. They are out on the streets selling fruits and vegetables that they've made in, in their own gardens, or maybe they sell clothes that they've made or other items that people need. We call them a street market. And here in their market, they are selling goods, things that they need, things that other people want, and they sell them to them. And in this story we're gonna to read today, there's a man who sells goods to people. He has things that he sells to help support his family and himself by making money. So let's go back over here to our story. Oh, and the other word, I'm sorry, is deeds. You may have heard that word before and you may not, but I think this is a word that you're gonna be able to figure out all by yourself from the story. I don't wanna tell you the answers. I wanna make you think. So I'm not gonna tell you this word. I'm gonna let you ask you to listen to our story. And as we're listening, see if you can figure out what a deed is. And at the end of the story, We'll talk about it and see if you got it right. But I think you'll be able to figure it out. So let's begin our story. Move myself out of the way. There we go. Once there was a poor boy who lived with his mother in India. More than anything else, the boy wanted a drum. One day, mother gave the boy a stick. Hmm. Now I have to stop and think about that. A stick, that seems like kind of an odd present for a mother to give to her little boy. I wonder why she's giving him a stick. Hmm, seems kind of strange, but he seems real happy with it. I'm gonna keep reading and see if I can find out. Oh, I see. The boy tapped on everything with his stick. That mom is pretty smart. He doesn't have a drum, but by giving him a stick, he can tap on things and he can make anything he has a drum. Look how happy he is. He must really love to make music. As he went tapping along, he saw a woman struggling to light her stove. Remember, struggling means she's trying really hard, but look at all the smoke. There's no fire there. She doesn't have a fire, so she can't cook her food. Take this stick to light your stove, he said. Wow, what a nice boy. He's taking that stick that he uses to play his drums and he's giving it to this woman because she needs it more than he does. That's a pretty nice thing to do. The woman gave the boy some bread as thanks. Then the boy heard a hungry baby crying. We know what hungry means. My stomach is empty and it's making noise. Well, when babies are hungry, they don't know how to talk and say, I'm hungry, so instead they cry. So he hears this baby crying. What does he do? Take this bread, the boy said to the baby's mother, and he gave it to her so that she could feed her baby. Wow. Again, he's taking something that is his, that was given to him, and he's giving it away to somebody else. He's doing something nice to show kindness. I bet that mother is very happy with him about that because now her baby will stop crying. The mother gave the boy a large jug as thanks. And look at that. He's got a drum. He's holding it under his arm and he's banging on it like a drum. Wow, he must be really happy with that drum. Then the boy saw an old man lying in the dirt. The boy filled the jug with water for him. 
The man said that robbers had stolen all of his goods. He must be a street merchant. He's a man that sits on the street and he sells things to other people. But some mean robbers came and took away all of his goods. Now he has nothing to sell and he has no way to make money for to take care of himself or his family. That's sad. Take this jug to sell, the boy said. The man gave the boy one of his horses as thanks. Again, this boy is being so very kind. He's giving away his things to make sure other people are happy. That man does look happy and his horse looks happy too because he's getting some water. And I love that he gave the boy a horse because he was so grateful. As the boy rode down the street, he saw a very sad man and some musicians. The man had no horse to ride to his wedding. Ah, oh, I understand. The man is going to his wedding and the musicians must be coming to play music for the wedding. But he doesn't have a horse, so he can't get there. How sad that must be. Hmm. You know what? This boy has been being so nice and giving things away. I wonder if he's going to give that man his horse. What do you think? Give me a thumbs up. Do you think he's going to give that man his horse? I bet he will too, because he's being so kind to other people. Let's see what happens. Take this horse, the boy said as he hopped off. He did, he gave the boy, the man his horse. That was really nice. And the musicians gave the boy a drum as thanks. Oh, I bet he's very happy now. He finally got his drum. The boy shouted with joy and banged on his drum. Later, the boy told his mother the whole story. When you are kind, your good deeds come back to you, mother said. That was a lesson the boy will never forget. Wow, that was pretty cool. He learned that by giving things away and being kind to others, that they would be kind to him in return. Hmm, there's that word deeds again. When you are kind, your good deeds come back to you. Now stop and think. We've been watching this boy through this whole story. And mom is talking about how he was doing some good deeds. Can you think of what that word deeds might mean? What is a deed? I want you to think about that for a minute. I'm going to give you a minute to think. If there is someone there next to you at your house, your mom, your dad, your brother, or even just talk to yourself, I want you to th say it out loud. A good deed is what? What do you think it is? What do you think a good deed is? I'm going to tell you what I think it is. Are you ready? See if you thought the same thing as I did. I think a good deed is when you do something nice for somebody. When you do something nice to help someone else, I think that is doing a good deed. What do you think? Did you come up with the same answer as me? You know what, we're gonna find out if we're right. Let's see. This book has something in it called a glossary. A glossary, that's a big word. See it up here, glossary. A glossary is kind of like a little dictionary. It gives you words that you might not know, and it tells you what they mean. And look, right up here at the top, it says deeds. A deed is actions done on purpose. That means you do it because you mean to, not by accident, but because you thought about it and you thought, I'm gonna do this. And these are often deeds that are kind, noble, or brave. Just like the boy in our story. He didn't accidentally give that stick away to the lady that needed the fire. He did it on purpose because he was being kind. He didn't accidentally drop the bread and give it to the lady with the crying baby. He did it on purpose. He said, that baby's hungry. Here's some bread. He was doing something to be kind. I like that. And look, other words in our glossary, goods. Remember I told you what that was? Things that can be bought and sold to meet people's wants and needs. Things other people want and you sell the two of them. Hungry, well, we know what that means. You want or need some food. Musicians are people who make music. 
this is cool. Do you see how this glossary is telling me what these words mean? So if I didn't know, I could look here. Robbers are people who steal from others by force. And struggling means you're having a hard time reaching a goal or accomplishing something you're trying to do. A glossary is a great addition to a book. Not all books have them. But if you're ever reading a story and you come across a word that you just can't figure out, check and see if there's a glossary in the back. And I bet you might find one and it'll help you. So this was a really great story. I really like how the boy was learning about being kind to others and how when he was being kind, just like his mom said, it made other people happy and they were kind to him too. Try and remember that. When you see somebody, try being kind and see if you can't help them make you happy as well. Now, we've read this story. It was a good one. I hope we remember it. Our job now is to think about those causes and effects. So let's go over here to this worksheet. Hmm, let's see. I have my cause and my effect. Looks a lot like the ones we've done before. Now in this one, it's telling me that the effect was the boy gave the mother his bread. Now I have to try and think, why did he do that? Why did the boy give the mother his bread? I think I remember, but in case I don't, I can go back here to my story and let's see if we remember. Where was the boy with his bread? Oh, there the boy has the bread. But what happened? He heard a hungry baby crying. Do you think that's why he then gave the bread to the mother? The effect was he gave the bread to the mother. So what was the cause of that? It was because he heard a hungry baby crying. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to write that right here in my cause box. He heard a hungry baby crying. That's why he gave the mother his bread. He heard her baby and it was hungry and it was crying. So he gave her his bread. Remember how he did that? That was very kind. I like that. Now, our next one says that the man gave the boy his horse. Hmm. Why did the man give his boy, give the boy his horse? I know if I had a horse, I don't know if, <clears throat> excuse me. I know if I had a horse, I don't know if I'd want to give it away. But the man did. Do you remember why? Stop and think for a minute and see if you can remember. Why did the man give the boy his horse? Share your answer with somebody who's there with you. See if you can remember. And now we'll go back to the story and see if we're right. Let me see. That's when he gave the bread to the mother and she gave him a jug. I do remember that. Oh, but then he saw an old man lying in the dirt. Do you remember why the old man was lying in the dirt? Because robbers had stolen his goods. So what did the boy do? He filled the jug with water and then he gave it to the man. And why did the man give the boy his horse? He gave the boy one of his horses as thanks because, why? Because the boy gave him his jug. I'm going to go write that down over here. Because the boy gave him his jug. That's why he gave the horse to the boy. Because he was so thankful that the boy had been nice to him. I like that. Wow. Are you remembering how this works now? <clears throat> we have one more. Let's see if we can find one more. The boy shouted with joy and banged on his drum. Now, I remember that. That was at the end of the story. Why was the boy so happy? Why was he shouting with joy and banging on his drum? See if you can think of that one. This one's a little bit tricky, I think. The boy shouted with joy and banged on his drum. Why? Why did he do that? Let's see, at the end of the story, it says, wait a minute, let me go back a page. The musicians gave the boy a drum as thanks. And right after that, boy, he was banging on that drum and shouting with joy. But why was he so happy? I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the story. Let's see if you remember this part. At the beginning of the story, it told us, 
that more than anything else, the boy wanted a drum. So I think when he got that drum at the end, he was so happy because he'd finally gotten something that he'd always wanted, a drum. I'm gonna write that down here. He finally got what he always wanted. He always wanted to have a drum and now he finally had it. No wonder he was shouting for joy and banging that drum. He finally got what he'd always wanted. Wow. All right. I hope you remembered all those answers before I wrote them down. Did you remember those answers? Did you remember why the boy gave his, the mother his bread? Do you remember what caused the man to give the boy his horse? And do you remember what caused the boy to be so happy that he was shouting for joy and banging on his drum? If you do, then you're starting to get the hang of cause and effect. And I really hope you did. What we're going to do now is when we are finished here, one of our seesaw activities that I want to share with you that you can do has to do with kind of like what our story is. In our story, we read about the good deed that the boy had done. And if you remember, we discovered that a good deed is when you do something nice for somebody else. I want you to think about a time when you did a good deed for somebody else. I know you have, I've seen you do it. Think about things you've done in the classroom to help a friend, or maybe something you've done at home to help your mom. If you've done something that made somebody else feel very happy, then that is a good deed. So think about a time when you've done a good deed for someone else. And I want you to tell me what you did using words and pictures. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can draw a picture. Oh, well, actually, yeah, you could do it one of two ways. You can draw a picture yourself on a piece of paper, which is what I have here. Or you can even use the drawing tools that are here inside of our program if you want to draw a picture right here in the program, just like we did down here. Either way, but I want you to show me a picture and tell me what you did to, as a good deed to help other people. Use words and pictures and make sure you tell me how did it make you feel when you did that good deed? Because it should have made you feel really good too. If you've drawn it on a paper, go ahead and take a picture of it and you can put it in here or you can just draw it right here in the program. And then make sure you click on that microphone because I want to hear you tell me your story. Describe your good deed and make sure you tell me how it made you feel as well. And then click that green button to add it to our journal. And I'll be able to go in and look at it just like I did our pictures of the trees that you all did the other day. Okay? Um, that's what you can work on for tomorrow. Now, your homework, as always, we read this story together and I helped you figure out how we do our cause and effect. Well, your homework for today is I want you to go in, and again, I will put these in the Assignments tab. Remember to click on that spaceship? I will put both of these stories there for you. But your job today is now you're going to read this story. It's called Lou's Flu. And in this story, Lou has a present that he gives to all his friends too. But it's not necessarily a good deed. I think you can tell by the picture, Lou's not feeling so good. And this story, he shares his flu with his friends. Not necessarily a good thing. In fact, it's not a good thing. I hope right now you're staying healthy. We may not have the flu, but we have this other thing going around and I hope you're being very careful not to share it with others, just like Lou does in this story. So your job today is I want you to read this story about Lou's flu. You can listen to it, but then also try and read it by yourself. It's not that hard. And after you finish reading about Lou's flu, then your job will again be to show me a cause and effect. I will send a worksheet home with mom and dad. But again, if you don't have it, do it just like we did our one with our leaning tower. Use your notebook, put cause on one side and effect on the other. And for Lou's flu, I'd like you to come up with at least three things that were a cause and effect in this story. What did Lou do and what was the effect? What did his brother Stu do? And what was the effect of that? Keep reading in the story and you're gonna find out how Lou and his friends share something not very nice. 
And when you get done with that, I have another activity over here in Seesaw that you can do that relates to that story. I want you to create a video to remind Lou what he should do to make sure that he does not share his flu with his family anymore. I want you to make sure that you tell him at least two things. If you read the story, it's going to help you. These two things that he should or should not do to make sure he's not sharing his flu with other people. And this one's kind of cool. After you've clicked this green button to get started, then there's in there a button that looks like a video camera. And I want you to make a video. And I want you to tell Lou, send him a message. First, make sure you tell him that you hope he's feeling better soon because we want to wish him well and tell him to get well. But then remind him, what are two things he should remember to make sure that he does not share his flu with others? After you've finished recording your video, make sure you click that green check mark button so that it gets added. That way I can come and see it too. I would love to hear the message that you have for Lou to help him remember how not to share things with others. Uh, I'm also going to be adding another one of our word sorts in here with one of our other sounds that we've been working on. So make sure you check for that as well. As a reminder, please, after you've finished your work here on Lou's Flu and um, have enjoyed reading that story and listening to that story, please make sure that you are also remembering, also remembering to read every day, 20 minutes every day reading. You can read Lou's Flu. You can read other stories in there as well. Um, make sure you're reading 20 minutes every day. I do hope you keep practicing your math every day. And uh, did you do two pages out of your book yesterday? I hope so. If not, make sure you get them done today and then do two more pages tomorrow as well. We want to keep our skills sharp. We want to make sure we're remembering and learning. So continue your work at home. Get mom and dad to help you. Get your big brother or sister to help you. Um, I heard some big sisters helping our, our friends yesterday. Very nice. Thank you to all your family. Make sure you give your mom and dad a big hug and tell them thank you for all the help they're doing. They have a really hard job now. They're not only your mom and dad, now they have to be your teacher too because I can't be there with you and I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully we'll all be able to get together again real soon. Um, before we go today, I, I want to make sure that you are not only learning, but are you exercising? Are you getting your face away from the screen of this computer? Are you getting away from the TV and away from those video games and making sure that your bodies are staying fit? I know one thing that I miss is our Go Noodles. We haven't done a Go Noodle in almost two weeks now, and that's hard. So remember, you can find Go Noodle on your computer at home. It's free. Tell mom and dad it's free. Just go to GoNoodle.com. But just in case you haven't, I was hoping maybe you guys would dance with me today. I want to do one of our Go Noodles together, and I really hope you get up and dance with me. Are you ready? Let's go over here to Go Noodle. And... Um, Maybe on Friday we'll do what I know is your favorite song, but today, how about we do my favorite song? You know which one that is, right? Best day of my life. Are you ready? We're going to stand up. Are you ready? Get up off the couch. Get up out of your chair. And let's do the best day of my life. Oop, there I am. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Here we go. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? I'm off key here. Come on, are you dancing? Are you dancing with me? Come on. Come on, you know this song. Don't be embarrassed. Get up. Get your mom to dance with you. Come on. Get him to dance with us. Come on. Tell him it's not hard. We can do it. Turn up the music if you need to so they can all hear it.
We got this. Come on, you got it. Are you dancing? I can't see you, but I know you are, aren't you? Come on. Get that heart pumping. Miss Swanson would be really proud of you right now. We got this. Almost done. Keep going. Nice job, guys. I do hope you join me for that. That was fun. We haven't done that in a while. I miss that. I really do. Let's see how many points we're up to. Huh? It's been a while. We're going to have to do this so we can keep earning our points. Our poor monster hasn't grown in a while. Let's see. We have three. How many more do we need to make him grow? Remember, we have three. We need ten. How many more do we need? Are you going to add or are you going to subtract? Tell me how many we need. Let me hear you. How many more? <laughs> you knew what it was, huh? If I have need 10 and I take away the three we already have, how many do we need? Seven more. We're going to have to make sure we do one of these every time we get together. Okay? All right. It's been really fun this morning. There we are. It's been really fun this morning. I hope you come back and join me again on Friday. Remember, we'll be back here on Friday. So I hope to see you then. Keep learning. Keep reading. Keep exercising. And make sure you thank your mom and dad. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.